We're here tonight to recognize John and his commitment and contributions to the community, and we'll be doing so in two ways. Uh, the first, uh, telling some stories, and, and the second part of uh, the tribute to John is to uh, begin this, this endowment fund uh, in recognition of John's um, commitment to, to serving the, the working poor, the uninsured, and the underinsured here in the community. Now, tonight, a lot of the folks are going to hear what a benevolent and kind-hearted soul you are, uh, how you are a champion of the downtrodden and a champion of the uninsured. But uh, I'm going to tell a little story, and then we'll just let the people judge for themselves. Faster, faster, he would say, pump, pump, pump. And my hands had become talons like an eagle, and they wouldn't respond. So halfway up that hill, my hands quit. I knew that my hands were just about gone. But anyway, I got them to working, and I pumped all the way into Flagstaff. We pulled in front of my house, and I got out, and I said, if the Lord will forgive me, I'll never go fishing with this fellow again. And I said, John, you uh, don't strike me as a man that starts his day with a glass of whiskey. He said, Tony, there are some things you just can't explain. <laughs> He said, I drug the milking stool around behind her, climbed up on it. I didn't have any more rope, but I took off my belt and I tied her tail up to the rafter overhead. He said, just then, my pants fell down to my ankles. Sue walked in the barn. There are some things you just can't explain. Couldn't think of very many times when he went off his horse. Lots of other people lay scattered on the ground. <laughs> but, but John pretty much stayed on his horse. Says, How do you know there's a car coming, Dr. Cassidy? He says, I can hear him. I said, you can hear him? <laughs> 60 miles an hour and very quiet sometimes. Oh, I can hear them. Okay. And they all sound so sweet. It is fake. I really would prefer you use dismiss the patient as opposed to discharge. Discharge is something that comes from a vagina or other orifices. So when no one was looking, my son walks over and opens the cage. 25 dogs in 25 different directions. John has always prided himself on having good judgment. And he exercised that, I think, to an nth degree in this particular instance, because we were never, ever invited to a mental health. <laughs> he noticed the water started running across the floorboard of his pickup. And this was kind of bad, and, and, and the water died. Let me throw you a chain and put that chain on your pickup, and we'll pull you out of there. So. They went up the hill in reverse, and there was a beautiful fountain coming out of this. <laughs> I so admire all you people who can come up here and not be nervous. I, I, I would really like a small cup of saliva. <laughs> Here is some of what I learned so far from John Caskey. Lesson one, speak in a deep voice. <laughs> Over the years, I would, I would hear him use that same voice 
with patients, families, and hospital administrators. <laughs> Lesson four, be dramatic. The Mayo Clinic does not have one. <laughs> Lesson six, recruiting a new physician is a delicate and subtle art. When John was first meeting with Bill Wilson, he called me at home on a Saturday. Johnson, come down here. I've got a hot one. <laughs> John favored, in general, hiring doctors with families. They have to work. <laughs> John once came up to me and said, Well, Lanny, you know, the earth is flat. <laughs> I am a member of the Flat Earth Society to this day. <laughs> Here is an old proverb. The knife is finally used up by use and sharpening. My best to you and Godspeed, John Caskey. Do an arterial stick to get the blood. And John says, uh, What do we need that for? We can just look at them and see whether they're blue or pink. We don't need a gun. <laughs> then he joined the ER physician group, and a whole lot of them have left him. <laughs> so, John, you have pushed me into retirement. <laughs> Thanks a lot. <laughs> It seems that in the process of filling up, one of his horses lifted his tail and defecated right out the back of the trailer, leaving a nice sm smelly pile right next to the gas pumps. Well, the young man in attendance brought John a broom and dustpan, indicating John should clean it up. John did it and then drove home. John called JD, the owner of the station, and related the incident. Then John also reminded J.D. that the week before when J.D. had brought a granddaughter to John's office who had regurgitated a large amount of John's waiting room floor, <laughs> the nurse cleaned it up, not J.D. The story goes further that later that evening, J.D. went to his service station and terminated the attendance. <laughs> I thought that maybe I could be a stand-up comedian. <laughs> and then I realized when I was approaching this tonight, if you're standing up when you get roasted, that's called burning at the stake. <laughs> so, he said, well, at least I haven't wasted my life chasing a bunch of food dogs all over the countryside. <laughs> Thank you all for being here. Thank you for doing this for North Country. I was talking about burning at the stake. I was wondering too, if you were getting burned at the stake, would you be able to look out over the crowd and see your friends and family there? I don't know. So thank you for being here. <laughs> and John and Terry's prowess in fundraising was unrivaled. The two of them together personally raised over $1 million. And that $1 million helped turn this into this, which is North Country's new medical home. Thank you, John. The John H. Caskey Endowment has been created to provide enduring support for the health care needs of the uninsured and underinsured people of Flagstaff. But like all good community efforts, we need your help. Your very presence here this evening has indeed been an honor for all of us, and we ask that you consider honoring John with a donation to the endowment bearing his name, not just for the needs of today, but for generations to come. Thank you. Daddy, daddy, better go back again, for it must be a mighty fine town. Daddy, daddy, better go back again. 